Hey guys, Scott here again uh, with a new beer dissection video. Um, what I have for you today is from Two Roads, Road to Ruin. It is a double IPA. Um, I forget the name. They're out of Connecticut. I forget the name. There was a, a pretty famous um, New England IPA uh, that they've brewed before up there. They probably still continue to brew it. Um, this is a double IPA, 8% alcohol. Um, Road to Ruin. Um, I think I looked it up real quickly. Um, they use uh, a lot of Pacific Northwest hops, uh, depending on the resource. Right from their website, I think they write six or seven uh, varieties for the Pacific Northwest. Citra, Centennial, Cascade, Magnum, I think was another hop. And then they obviously didn't, didn't list all the, the uh, varieties um, from there. Um, but Road to Ruin, and I don't know, there's a, looks like a rattlesnake on the, on the bottom of the label there. Uh, not too much more than that, other than being a double IPA, they say big, temptingly hoppy um, double IPA with plenty of bite. Um, again, Pacific, six Pacific Northwest hops, I think I named like four of them for you, uh, maybe five. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're expecting something really bold, uh, maybe some alcoholic warmth, um, kind of a juiced up IPA with the, with the Pacific Northwest hops. I'm expecting to be more of like a West Coast IPA. So let's take a look at this, okay. Okay, have my typical, you know, if you've watched more than one, two videos of mine, my uh, oversized snifter tulip glass there. Okay, I'm not gonna pour it all the way up, but. All right, so we got a nice, very light tan um, head there. You know, kind of a medium gold uh, color, pretty clear. I mean, I apologize again for some of my nucleation bubbles there which this glass is definitely clean. It just may not be technically beer clean, um, but we're also getting some nucleation from the, probably a nucleation point in the bottom of the uh, glass. Okay. Um, again, pretty clear, not, you know, not too much haze other than my nucleation bubbles there on the side of the glass, um, but it's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's take a sniff of the aroma. Oh yeah. You kind of get that citrus, uh, slight grapefruit, kind of dank, um, almost as if they were using Simcoe, but I don't think Simcoe was one of the hops that was listed there. Slight tropical fruit, maybe slight uh, piney. There's definitely some fruit in there, maybe kind of like a melon, pineapple, light grapefruit. Maybe even a little bit of like that bubble gum. Some of these um, hop varieties, I perceive some uh, bubble gum aroma to it. But definitely not overpowering with the, uh, uh, you know, like the grapefruit or, or citrus type of hops on the aroma, at least on the nose. But very nice and very pleasant smelling. But you can see the color looks a lot more. You can see the clarity there. You know, as it settles down even more, um, you can tell that this is, you know, that kind of golden, you know, you know, dark gold to maybe even like a light amber color now at this point when I'm looking at it in the light a little bit better. Um, kind of tells you more, more common of a West Coast IPA versus that, uh, you know, uh, opaque looking yellowish uh, uh, oatmeal like type of New England IPA uh, cloudiness that you'd see a lot of times due to, again, a lot of times unmalted wheat, oats, um, uh, the polyphenols from the hops and things like that to get that really deep, cloudy uh, beer, you know, those juicy New England IPA. So this looks pretty standard for a West Coast IPA. I do not know the grist of this, um, but I'm suspecting there's definitely some crystal malt being used as well as some two-row, um, but it is still pretty clear and has that kind of light amber, maybe medium to, medium gold color. Okay, so let's take a swig of it. Yeah, so still a little bit of that slight citrus, um, tropical fruit, pineapple, um, 
light grapefruit. You kind of even get a little bit of a tannin bite, almost like the grapefruit pith would be. Um, again, of course, they're not using that particular fruit, but that's just kind of the um, character that the hops will impart on a lot of these beers. Um, it's definitely a little bit of warmth I'm getting as I'm sitting here. So you kind of get hit with that alcoholic bite at being 8%. As I've said, I usually kind of perceive it around 75 to 8%. So you kind of get that alcoholic warmth. But it does fleet away, so it actually leaves you kind of nice and, um, um, you know, you know, yearning kind of for a little bit more. Um, more profile, you know, you definitely get that bread crust. Light graham cracker kind of malt profile. I didn't mention that too much on the nose, but I do get that there too. Um, medium bodied, medium to full bodied, um, because just probably the, the amount of hops that's being used, but not cloyingly sweet. Um, I'm not gonna say it's balanced. I mean, it definitely is hop forward um, in the flavor and the aroma, uh, but there is enough malt backbone there that you're not feeling like you're just kind of getting a hop bomb like on some of the New England IPAs, there is enough malt backbone to kind of balance some of that uh, bitterness. But there definitely is, while I'm talking about bitterness and that assertive to highly assertive bitterness here. Um, I don't know the IBU units on this, but for a double IPA, you're gonna be, you're gonna be sitting somewhere north around 60 to you know, 80 you know, IBUs we're probably sitting with, with this beer. Um, but very nice. Um, I think the last beer I had from Two Roads, again, I believe they're from Connecticut. Again, it was a New England IPA. I have good memories of that. It's been quite a while, though. Um, I have a lot of friends that enjoy the New England IPA, so I probably got it from them or hanging out with them. Um, pairing with this, you know, these strong IPAs are phenomenal with blue cheeses, maybe even a Stilton, um, sharp cheddar cheeses. Um, something definitely with a little oomph to it because this would overpower um, things like mozzarella, ricotta, things like that. Um, you know, on fish, I, you could probably go a little, you know, bolder, you know, uh, tuna, um, swordfish, uh, maybe even salmon. Even though, though, with some of the fishier fish, sometimes with these hoppy IPAs, you want to be careful. Sometimes you can get a metallic. Some people get like a metallic taste to it. Um, also with very hot, spicy dishes, sometimes um, these type of IPAs can accentuate that spiciness, which may be desirable for some of you. Um, but again, you know, mahi tacos, uh, you know, soft tacos, uh, doesn't necessarily have to be soft, but uh, try to think, even just a nice salad with some citrus in there, complement some of the dressing, this would be great for. Um, but a very good beer. You know, sometimes I don't drink double IPA so much because, you know, I don't need to be blown away too much with the alcoholic strength. But, again, you get that warmth, get a little bit of that bitterness, um, a little bit of that um, astringency, almost like that pithy grapefruit pith type of taste on there. But then it kind of, you know, mellows out a little bit. and You're kind of just left with... A little bit of that kind of grapefruit citrus on the back end of this um, aftertaste. Um, but again, guys, you know, let me put it up on the screen, even though I probably had to pop over the shoulder a few times. Road to Ruin from Two Roads. I'm on Long Island. Um, they're up in Connecticut, I believe. Um, definitely, I, if I was grading this beer, which again, sometimes I'm on again, off again with that, um, you know, good B plus, A minus. Uh, uh, beer. Uh, not too much bad to say about it. I kind of always leave a little wiggle room um, with some of these uh, beers so that I'm not sitting, uh, but you know, A, A minus, B plus, kind of in that range. Definitely, if you see it on the shelves, I would recommend it um, without any hesitation. Um, sometimes I sound more critical than I really am with the beers, but I'm really enjoying this and I will enjoy the rest of this. Um, but again, you can kind of see as it's really settled down, Pretty clear, pretty standard West Coast IPA. So if you like IPAs with bitterness, a little malt, 
slight crusty back, malt back, uh, backbone to it, you'll like this. If you're just looking for a sheer hop bomb with citrus, orange juice, uh, grapefruit juice, this may not be exactly for you, but if, you, if you'd want to try a nice West Coast IPA, this kind of sits there. I think, again, Centennial, Magnum, Cascade Hops, Citra, um, I think was what was listed on their website. Um, um, so anyway, guys, last time, two roads, road to ruin, double IPA. Till the next review, guys, have a great day. Take care.